Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online and the upcoming Age of Discovery expansion. Um, that's the expansion is coming out just this week, and so um, uh, a lot of my next videos on this channel is going to be covering a lot of stuff with the Age of Discovery expansion the moment that it releases and I get a chance to actually play it. Um, in this video in particular, I'm going, to, I'm going to go over the red alert changes inside the game for Mercs and why I feel that that's particularly good for the game. I'm going to go over what, in my opinion, are the best tanking energy types inside the game. And then I'll just give you a tiny little preview in terms of upcoming content on, on this channel. Feel free to skip um, to those various sections of, of this video, but it's going to be extremely short, so you really probably don't even need to worry about that. Um, in terms of um, the, red, the red alert stuff that happened, um, and the recent announcement with that, and the extreme backlash of it, um, the, really comes down to this problem, is that with operations right now, a lot of operations don't queue, and a lot of operations just takes too long to do that combined with running the mission. As thus, um, the Voth marks, Lucari marks, and Capetta marks are extremely hard to get. Um, even even with the uh, random TFO change, um, competitive marks are still going to be very hard to get, actually. Um, the, uh, the biggest worry that the developers were feeling was that, or at least my impression of their feeling, is that if they kept red alerts inside the game perpetually, that no, that not enough people would run, run random TFOs. And so basically they're saying that with Age of, of Discovery, that, we're, that red alerts is going to be an extremely rare thing if they actually come back at all. And then now, basically, if you want a lot of marks and choice of marks, random TFOs is the way to go now. What this basically means overall is that if you is that if if you're only like a one captain person in Star Trek Online, this is overall going to be a buff and much better for you because you're going to have a, lo a lot lower operation wait times and be able to like go through a bunch of missions really really quickly. However, if you have a bunch of captains and all you're wanting to do is just get through a lot of operations as quickly as possible through red alerts for like one particular um, mark, um, this is actually very, very bad for you because it actually is going to take much longer um, to, uh, to be able to be able to do that stuff per day. Um, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate, um, but I do understand where, where they are coming from. They're wanting, um, they really want people to do random CFOs and, and to run a lot of the other operations inside of the game. Um, the other downside to this is that if you're wanting that, that choice of marks, you'll need to learn how to, how to play um, generally, at least in a general sense, all of the operations inside of the game. Some of them are a bit harder than others. Um, so that is something to definitely to un understand and, and to realize. Um, once I get things finally settled in my fleet and a couple trailers done, I, I will start also putting out on the Beta Squad Elite um, you, you, YouTube page um, a lot of really quick, like really short guides in how, how to complete all the operations inside the game, as well as some, some links to different pages in terms of how, how to do those operations e easily as well. So y'all can look, look forward to that in the future. Um, so now I'll get into the tank and energy types inside the game. I have alluded to this and talked about this quite a bit for two of the energy types, but I haven't really gotten into this in depth with all six. So what I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with for two energy types for each one of the general types of tanking inside the game, according to Darkblade and something that I completely agree with for him. There's damage recovery, which is, you know, the strength in which, you know, after, after you get damaged, the ability to like to get your hull and shield back after, after you take damage. Damage negation is basically like your, your innate resistances. Um, to survive damage, and then there's threat generation, which is your overall DPS as well as other things that are enhancing the um, the likelihood that the enemy is going to be attacking you in some fashion. So the first off, um, the best one for damage recovery by far inside the game right now is Piezo Polaron Beamer Race. Um, you get these either through the Lucari Reputation Store whenever you get it to tier five, or or you can also just uh, periodically get these as as you're leveling up the Lucari Reputation all the way from tier zero, all the way up to tier six. Um, this is the best damage recovery one because um, it, it, it's proc, it gives you a, um, an increase in shield regen, as well as it gives you an increase to um, hull regen based upon your maximum hull, which if you're a tank captain, 
you're already going to have a much higher hold to start off with. And so this is going to be an even, even more powerful beam array for you. Um, the other option for damage recovery is through fleet and renewer um, beam arrays inside the game. I'm, I'm just using phaser as, as an example here, just simply because phaser doesn't have any great tanking options for you. Uh, besides um, the linked um, beam arrays from, from the discovery lockbox. Um, the options here is either getting um, the fleet beam arrays through the fleet fabricator um, tier five, or to get um, the Draenor beam arrays through the colony infrastructure tier five. The colony ones are slightly better because it gives you um, he, um, basically a nerf version of Piazza Polaron for both um, hull and shields. However, um, very, very few fleets actually have colony tier five because of how expensive in terms of dilithium it is to get to a tier five colony. Um, so uh, the, the fleet tier five beam arrays are a fairly good option as well. Uh, however, it's just a shield heal. Um, overall inside the game, to my under understanding, the main people that use these beam arrays are mainly PvP players, simply because that additional healing is quite valuable for them. Um, now we're going to the second category, damage negation. The very best ones here, in my opinion, are diffusive test round beam arrays. These are basically these Zenkethi weapons that they like to use. Um, and this gives a this, this gives the best damage negation inside the game, in, in my opinion, for a type of beam array that you can get on they put it in many different slots. There is one particular particular beam array that, that you'll see in my rainbow build in a, a couple of months that is similar to the diffusive tetrion, but yeah, you'll see that in a, a, a little while. You get this through the Zenkethi lockbox. Fortunately, the, these prices have dropped a little bit on the exchange to now, like for a Mark 12, very rare. I think it's only about around 200 to 300,000 um, energy, energy credits. So it's not super bad versus most of like your lockbox um, beam arrays, but it's still the de a decent pretty penny um, in, order, in order to get these for your ship and to like to to level them up. Um, the other option for damage negation is through anti-proton with radiant anti-proton beam arrays. So I I instead of getting shield resistance like what what this guy is doing. Um, what you do with, with with these beam arrays is that you get additional temporary hit points that the enemy has to soak through in order to actually kill you. Um, this this was much better on release, and its scaling with like on temporary hit points and things was based upon ships being at a, at a certain level amount of, of, of hit points. Because of how much the game is scaled in terms of of um, hole inside the game, if they really wanted to make these extremely viable inside the game now. What they really should do is um, buff this instead of being a flat hole, it should be a percentage hole on temporary hit points. And they'd be able to have this scale infinitely, no matter how how much higher hole and shields and stuff gets for, for ships inside the game. But that's just my opinion. Um, there, um, there is, there's another type of beam array that also, um, that, that its proc gives you additional um, Damage resistance, resistance. Um, the the pulse phasers is, is 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 what that would be here. But because of how much damage resistance you're able to get innately with a lot of different traits and consoles and things, that one's really not very good to be honest. So anyway, um, in terms of threat generation, uh, for the third category here, the best one by far is plasma beam arrays. Um, basically, like if you had all six energy types from six different ships at the exact same distance from an enemy, all doing the exact same consistent amount of DPS, the enemy would, would be attacking the, pl the the guy who's dealing plasma damage. That's just how threat generation works inside the game. And so, I mean, plasma is definitely gonna be, gonna be the way to go. With the DS9 lockbox, we finally got a plasma beam, a plasma energy weapon that was that's actually good for tanking. So the thing with the Franginar beam arrays is that it's actually almost like a pseudo damage negation one actually because 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 with plasma it's already doing the best threat generation inside the game for because that, that, that that's what plasma does but the Ferengadar one um its proc reduces the damage output of the of the enemy that that you're attacking that the proc went went, went against um, and so it's basically a better version better modern version of the voth anti-proton beam arrays um, but, but it's for plasma damage, so it's really, really nice. 
Um, the moment that they add a set omnidirectional plasma weapon, my 350 degree arc beam build for plasma will be complete and it'll be super awesome. Um, what you all will see with, with my plasma build in, in the future is that it, I actually use a single cannon and turret build for my damage for a plasma tank just simply because I prefer being able to fire in the front versus having, 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 having the broadside all of the time. If you don't care about threat generation and you wanted to have just do a lot of DPS for your threat generation, the best route to go currently inside the game is to go with the disruptors. Technically, if you want to do maximum DPS with five disruptor or four disruptor allies with you in space, coalition disruptors is the best way to go actually in terms of math and things. However, linked disruptor membranes are also exceptionally strong as well. The disruptors have, have the best support inside the game combined with their proc reduces the um, damage resistance of guys that, that you are attacking, which is pretty nice. Um, you get this through the discovery lockbox. However, um, linked beam arrays might be a lot more accessible soon um, with like C store stuff potentially coming out this week. Um, so that's something that might be nice for all of you. Um, as I said, this is the best threat generation in terms of DPS uh, in, um, inside the game right now. Of course, a lot of the other disruptor risks can also do this fairly well as well. So these, these are my recommendations personally for the different types of energy weapons. Um, I will give, bring out a later video um, going over a complete tier list of every single weapon subtype for every single weapon type. Just going through all of them and, and my personal rankings for them for tanking. A lot of those will probably be similar to a lot of your like DPS ranking tier list stuff um, out out there right now, just because a lot of the subtypes don't deal with tanking, and so a lot of those DPS types of um, stat things will be pretty pretty similar. Outside of that, I um, this week and probably in the next couple of weeks, I'll go over different expansion reviews and, and discussions with the re of, of the of the upcoming um, at least first continuation of the Age of Discovery expansion that will continue to be going on for probably at least the next nine months or so along with the current starships that they've uh, announced thus far in, in comparisons to other starships inside of the game and whether you should actually get the starship or not um I'm, the biggest thing i'm, I'm, I'm going to be and i'm still currently working on is the star trek online lore and the star trek online timeline in terms of what makes sense in terms of the order um in terms of rough dates not to mention uh the race, gender, um, and all that stuff for all of the different faction um, main captains for, for the various storylines. Since there actually is a, a lot of very strong hints about certain stuff inside the game right now. That in time I'll be able to have that organized very well so I can, so I can give you some really nice presentations on all that. I'll also, um, because a lot of you are highly requesting it, I, am I will do some tank build trial runs in the near future. I will not um, have them in the same video as my actual tank builds though. Um, um, they will be separate simply because the trial run stuff that I'm actually gonna be using is going to be extremely long. It's, 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 it's a very, very long foundry mission. So if I attach that to a video, it might be two hours long. And I don't really see a lot of you, especially since a lot of you are only spending six to eight minutes watching my videos anyway. Having a two hour video on there is gonna probably deter a lot of you from watching the video. But anyway, for my remaining tank builds I, I haven't covered yet on, on, on the channel that I will cover in, in the future is an anti-proton build that I will have my Voth theme build for this. Um, on my plasma build, I will be showing off a single cannon plasma tank build I will show off my science um, tor torpedo um, tank build. And then in, in a few months, once I get my Age of Discovery character level up to tier six and everything, I will show off my rainbow build of my build that I feel is the best build available inside the game, or at least one of the best in the game. In terms of if you wanna have an actual pure rainbow, eight different energy type um, build for, for yourself. I'll also, also start going over um, the budget tanks as well for all eight tank configurations as well inside the game. 
because of course I'm going to do all, all the six main ones plus the science tank one plus the rainbow one because it's it's all nice and fun. Um, additionally, for the for the budget builds, um, I will. Um, I mean, I'm still deciding whether I want to have it in the build in the videos with these themselves, or if I'm just going to have just one video just going over um, all of the missions and how how to to acquire those different ones for all of the of the, of the budget stuff inside the game. I'm still deciding that. But yeah, that's basically the main stuff for up upcoming content. There is other things I'm working on as well, but these are kind of the highest stuff on right now. The tank tier list stuff has kind of been pushed to the wayside for now. I, I will probably go back to that in the future, but these are all a bit more pressing right now for stuff on, on the channel. Anyway, um, thank you all for um for watching these videos. Thank you all for liking and, and subscribing. We finally passed the 100 subscriber mark, and so um, I finally be able to get my own custom URL for for the channel, which is pretty cool and nice. Um, if you're all interested in joining a young and growing fleet, feel free to join Beta Squadron Elite. Um, just message me me in, in, in game. Just click the about page on, on on the YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see the information there. Thank you all for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.